Hello, this is Cotton Stoops, and welcome back to another Lumen Legacy HDC video. And today's video is on Crab Tana. After the while, after the meta has settled a bit, Crab Tana seems to be a pretty solid Lumen in the role that it does. So let's talk about it. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to use encounter Crab Tana. From the counters and checks in teammates, you'll need to know in order to use Crab Tana in battles, as well as knowing the roles in the sets to team build around Crab Tana. Today's video is all about how to use encounter Crab Tana. So the role that Kraptana is going to be playing in your matches is a very essential question to ask and we can answer this question with its base stats. For example, it has a very bad HP stat and a unusable range attack stat of 9, at least offensively. This HP stat is never something you'd ever want to be considering swapping in on, at least just with this HP stat alone, and it is on par with other Lumens that are known for being frail, such as Gargolem attack and speed. However, you do have a decent range defense stat of 79 just to help bulk up your range defense. So your HP is somewhat being remedied by this range defense stat, but of course, Kraptana still doesn't want to take much hits on the range defense side. And you have a pretty good energy stat of 90, which will let you get you up to a 250 energy base benchmark, which is pretty common and good for a bunch of offensive and defensive Lumions. However, the one of the main selling points of Crab Tana is its base melee attack, speed, and melee defense. You have 100 melee attack and speed, which is a pretty good benchmark to have, at least for the speed tier, because this does let you outspeed Halvancic, Jalusa, Ikazune, Teclipse, all on paper, which is admittedly pretty nice. And your melee attack set of 100. This is on par with Lumens such as Avatross, who are known to not hit hard just turn 1, but after a few turns of setup, is definitely going to be a big threat on teams. And your melee defense stat of 117, this does remedy your HP stat somewhat, and it will of course help you swap in more, which will help Kraptana hit harder. And seeing its offensive coverage, it's a pretty good Lumion to actually hit things super effectively. With the Metal and Brawler as it stabs, it has Ancient, Metal, Typeless, Ice, Bug, and Light, all to hit super effectively. Ancient and Light types, there's a bunch of these Lumions roaming around. For example, you can hit Lumions such as Glashadia, Obsidragon, Nemare, all super effectively. For Metal types, there's quite a lot of Metal types still, such as Falkyrie, which is still a pretty common metal type, especially in this Glashadia Novidius Chironix meta. Typeless types, well, they're not really that common, but they are still useful to hit, such as Trumbull, Mutoon, and I guess you can count Lyricat on there, and Tao Shinu. Ice types, they're also somewhat common here. You can hit Lumens such as Himber, Akalos, Tundralin, and Tundralin is making an appearance on a lot of balance and semi style oriented teams, which is nice to hit overall. And bug types, there aren't really a lot of bug types that you can actually hit super effectively, so this, as of right now, is not going to be mentioned. So, what's the role that Kraptana is going to be playing? Well, it's going to be playing a pretty good offensive sweeper role because of its melee defense somewhat being a stat it can use and it does have a good setup potential with said melee defense and a pretty good setup tool with Drudge. Drudge will make your speed and melee attack even higher and will let you outspeed a lot of the metagame even after a plus one. So you'll still have to watch out for boots users after a plus one but after a plus two pretty much nothing besides priority will outspeed you. And finally, it is still very prone to range hits, so having a pivot or something defensive to take hits for Crab Tana is something that I would suggest, which will be elaborated on in the teammate section. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Crab Tana's set. So, for Crab Tana, we're going to be utilizing two sets, one main set and one niche set that will utilize its secret ability. As for the first set, we're going to be utilizing a regular ability, that being Razor Sharp. If I do recall, it's the regular ability, I think. Razor Sharp will allow you to have a 50% crit chance on all moves and will boost moves such as Hydro Slash and Slash to even more crit chance. And this is the same ability as Nevermare, if you don't know already. 
This ability is pretty much the main core of the sweeper role. It will have you, it will let you get higher base damage, or not base damage, but higher damage potential with this ability. And you, of course, you will be setting up and staying in. So this ability is pretty much the best ability you can run on sweeper sets. And the personality will be brawny, nimble, very clumsy. This is just so you can maximize your speed and attack without losing any defenses. And as for your move set. Rogue Assault, Drudge, and Razor Slash, two of your best stab moves, and Drudge gonna be your best options. There is Steel Crusher, but if I do recall, Razor Slash is more easy to learn, and I think it's getting boosted, or I think it does have more crit chance. I may be wrong, but Razor Slash is gonna be the move you will be running, and Drudge is for setup, Rogue Assault, your best stab, and as for the final slot, you can run a Wave Wrecker or Hydra Slash. Wave Wrecker has a higher damage potential and higher damage ceiling, however, it does create less times than Hydro Slash. However, if I do recall, this is a 20 base power difference between these two moves, and that to me is significant enough to run Wave Wrecker over Hydro Slash. You can, of course, still run Hydro Slash, but me personally, I'm gonna be running Wave Wrecker. And as for the, I don't know, choice, a health amulet, milkshake, and a choice of essence is what I would recommend. This is mainly because Crab Tana doesn't really want to be utilizing any energy cost, any more boosting energy costing items. It definitely can run it, but because of its sweeper roll, it doesn't want to run out of energy. So essences is what I would recommend. Milkshake is definitely good and as well as health hamlet, but me personally, I would rather put that on a more consistent defensive Lumion slot rather than an offensive Lumion that if the fit, if the sweep fails, then the item has gone to waste. And of course, you're going to be using your defensive Lumions more with these health amulet and milkshake rather than an offensive Lumion that's only going to be coming in the late game to actually threaten damage and sweep. And as for the TPs, this is gonna be a very TP friendly uh, setup for Wave Wrecker or Hydro Slash running four energy here for 250 and 96 HP as your leftovers. 200 melee attack and speed are of course to max out the stats we're gonna be using a lot. And yeah, pretty simple set. As for the next set, the only really big thing that's going to be changing, it's the ability. And this is the ability called Vengeance. This will make Kraptana a very good revenge killer, especially if you do run boots, because nothing can actually revenge kill you other than the nimble boots something, insert something, uh, new boots, zoo long, but overall, not a lot. So we're going to be utilizing the ability Vengeance to gain times two damage for one turn after a Lumion has died and we enter after the following death. And the personality here will be brawny, nimble, very clumsy. All you can definitely run v brawny boots. You will be getting outsped by boots users such as boots Jalusa I've been seeing, boots Ikazune. There's just boots users under your speed tier that will be able to outspeed you and of course stop the revenge killing. So. Personally, Brawny Nimble is what I would still use. And as for your move set, it is even more uh, it is even more required to run Wave Wrecker here because Hydro Slash is just less base power now. And of course, Wave Wrecker is still higher. And your Rogue Assault and Rager Slash, these are gonna be your two best moves for your stab moves, as I've said. And you have Barbs or Tribute as a last fourth move option. You don't really have any other coverage options you can run. So barbs, if you want to have like a crab tana lead, or if you predicting something to come in for hazard setup, so the opponent is kind of forced to remove them and you can play around that. And tribute is another option. If crab tana, if you don't want to have like an option to have something get in and you need a Lumia to get in for free, use Tribute. And as for the final, the item will be Specialty Boots as I've hinted already. This will make you as fast as possible and improve your chance at revenge killing. And as for the TPs, they're gonna be the same as last time. 
So with that out of the way, let's talk about the counters and checks in teammates for Crabtana. So, as for defensive counters and checks, I'm going to be going over the counters and then checks. Counters, there's really not a lot of solid answers, mainly because Craptana has the coverage to hit a lot of melee walls either neutrally or super effectively. So, these three are going to be your main answers. Very robust Harvest it's going to be pretty solid because it does have Earthquake and Driving Force to hit Craptana super effectively and ultimately get rid of its boosts. It also does pretty well in a crit and non-crit matchup, so this is pretty good. Bar Blast is pretty much the best answer here because it does have the ability to resist every move Craptana has, and it hits back with Toxoblast, Poisons, or sets up Icicle Traps, or even Power Focus. Bar Blast is just him. As for your snack, your snack doesn't have the damage output to actually threaten out Crabtana immediately, but it has the bulk and baffle potential to actually keep hitting or keep applying pressure on the team. And assuming you're running offensive lumens with your snack, then dealing with Crabtana, at least in the early and mid game, is going to be pretty easy. However, do note that once you're in the end game, if your if your your snack is low enough, Crabtana has the ability to just stay in and continuously hit until your snack is of course dead. So do keep that in mind. Anyways, we're gonna be talking about the checks now, and Soulburst Krakaloa is probably the best out of these checks. Mainly because it no matter what a Craptana does against Krakaloa, Krakaloa can just raging flame it, cut its damage in half, and now Craptana is ultimately useless in the match. These can't be the said said the same for Tundralin or Dokomori, because Dokomori is forced to run V robust sets just to consistently stop Craptana, and you are forced to run Sponge, which will of course kind of kind of like de-synergize with your ability with your very robust nature because you of course want to spine break with that robust nature and as for tundralin if the crab tana user is smart enough if your tundralin is like pretty is pretty much low or somewhere near the half hp crab tana if it sets up on the swap and then sets up again tundralin is pretty much dead Anyways, as for offensive counters or checks, or offensive cores I should say, there's a lot of options in which you can run. For example, you can run Shachi, Eruptodon, Dakuda, Dokomori, and then Crabtana. I've found pretty good success with this core, mainly because Dakuda and Solburst Eruptodon, they're pretty offensively oppressive because of the lack of walls they have and the guessing game with Dakuda. Shachi is just here for mainly damage support if the, if Soulburst Rotodon does have a pretty bad matchup on the opposing team. And Dokomori has Baffle, so it's going to be getting these guys in pretty easily. Another offensive core I would suggest is Jalusa, Wendelin, Glashadia, Krabtana. This is mainly going to be a hyper offense or mainly pure offense in oriented team with Jalusa and Wendelin acting as leads with Pivot or pure damage, which will get Craptana or Glashadia into the match. And because these guys are just too off, they're just work well pretty offensively because they resist all of their weaknesses and they of course provide the damage and support against matchups that each teammate will hate. I would suggest this team, if you are planning to use Craptana in more offensive oriented teams. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the conclusion on Crabtana. So I'd say it's pretty safe to say that Crabtana is just a pretty decent Lumion. Crabtana, at least that when I used and facing against in the Colosseum, most of the calculations that you'll need to do with in order to crit and actually break walls, that's not really a thing. Just like its other razor sharp counterpart, Nevermare, if it's not critting 100% of the time, then its damage is just bad. Unlike Illumion with Avatross, with a very similar or the exact same melee attack stat, Avatross has good coverage and pure damage with plus 2 brawn boost to actually threaten things out, while Crabtana doesn't really have that. 
Crabtana is just stuck to the, to the moves it has and doesn't have fast setup and doesn't have rev up. So at least to me, Drabtana doesn't seem like a pretty good Lumion. I'd say it's pretty decent just around where Nevermare is. However, I'm not so sure if Nevermare is better, is worse than it, mainly because Nevermare provides solid niches in a defensive role because of its defensive typing and bulk on a lot of bulky teams. So to me, Grabtana doesn't really seem to have one of the better niches, it's just a pretty decent Lumion that would fit well on some teams. So, what are your thoughts on Grabtana and the video? If you enjoyed the video and found something informational, then like the video and subscribe. I'll soon be finishing the Atlanteans part 2 series of all the Lumions, and of course, more videos down the line to come. Anyways, this is kind of soups. Signing off to remind you that Zulong is a dumpster fire. Anyways, see ya.